The University of the Free State and Universitas Academic Hospital have administered a safer treatment. They have become the first to use interstitial brachytherapy. Whoa, mouthful it is. And it is essentially a method of internal radiation where the source is placed inside or near the cancer. This allows it to deliver curative doses without, however, hurting other parts of the body which may surround uh, the cancer. Let's find out more from Professor Alicia Sheriff, and uh, she is head of the UFS Department of Oncology. Professor Alicia, thank you so much for your time this morning. Very, very interesting, uh, you know, practice this, this interstitial brachytherapy. What exactly is that? Thank you once again for the opportunity to discuss this with you this morning. So um, brachytherapy has been a part of the management of cervical cancer already for decades. But um, in our environment and uh, Many of our patients have quite a locally advanced disease. So having a further um, extension of brachytherapy with interstitial brachytherapy available for our patients with cervical cancer gives us the ability to also for those patients where the cancer has reached outside of the cervix itself and stretched into the surrounding tissue. We now also can apply and needles with with brachytherapy into those areas to give a better dose um, of radiation to those areas where the cancer goes outside of the cervix and because of the use of brachytherapy where the radiation dose um, decreases quite quickly beyond the actual source we are able to give less radiation to the normal surrounding tissue and focus on the cancer with this interstitial brachytherapy. So it's an extension of brachytherapy, which we have been applied, applying now for decades, but it helps us to be able to treat those patients with more adv locally advanced disease where we could not get effective safe doses for them in the past. Now, as you mentioned, brachytherapy has been in use, I think, since 1938, according to um, you know, the records that I've, I've looked at. So why is it then that you, as the UFS Academic Hospital, are the first academic uh, institute in Southern Africa to actually start administering this? Apart from you, who else has been administering? So these are techniques that have been developed and the, the guidelines for this have been written um, abroad and in Europe specifically, they have uh, developed guidelines and also this technology. And um, the, it's mostly applied there. There are some of the Northern African, African countries who have also um, embarked on this technology. But uh, the reason why we felt strongly to um, develop it in for us as well and make it one of our capabilities is because of the fact that we see these advanced cervical cancer patients um, and it's young patients, economically active people that, that present with these locally advanced diseases. So um, identifying the patients, um, the appropriate patients to give them this extra capable of uh, treatment would add value to those patients. The other thing is that it is more labor intensive. So it does require a, a, a more extensive anesthesia to be able to um, place these needles in the surrounding cervical um, areas. So therefore it is something that requires more advanced technology, um, uh, more human resources so, in so the sense of you, the So let me ask you this, Professor, before, before I let you go. Yes, it is currently yes. for the treatment of cervical cancer, but can it be used for other cancers? There's breast cancer, there's testicular cancer. Can it be used across the board? Yes, and, and thank you for adding those questions. So the aim is that uh, we are going to extend these capabilities also to prostate cancers, uh, skin cancers, uh, breast cancers, 
they, they, there's definitely much broader applicability. Um, the decision was to start in cervical cancers and um, a, 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 in the coming months, we will extend those capabilities also to um, some of the other cancers.